Hello, and welcome to Foxhole. I am going to be teaching you how to do basic logistics, and we'll be posting follow-up videos on how to do more advanced processes. If you're watching this video, you probably are new to Foxhole and want to learn how logistics works without having to be yelled at by a clan member, or just someone of higher rank than you who acts like they know better. First thing you want to do is spawn typically in a backline region, and you're going to want a region with a lot of different fields and mines because it'll be easier for you to achieve more convenience. I'll say. First thing you want to do is, unless you're joining at the beginning of a war, is come to this level thing called a seaport or a storage depot. And in public there should be tons of trucks, which I'm going to grab the Sisyphus because I'm special. And depending on the time of the war, yeah, you're going to have access to three different tools. A hammer, which you spawn with, a sledgehammer, which comes into play about mid-war, and then the harvester, which is late war and a very, very convenient vehicle. Now, first thing you want to do is grab one of these tools and head to your near salvage field that has nodes on it. Those numbers indicate how many nodes are left on the field. Yeah. And each node contains a certain amount, which I'm not 100% sure of. But as long as there's a number there other than zero, there is acquirable resources. The first and foremost of those is salvage, which is our, these fields with the screw icon. They are the backbone of basic logistics. You can either hey. take a hammer, hit them, or take a sledgehammer which is a lot quicker and more efficient. Also, there's a possibility... Uh, I'm going to be back in a minute with a um, crane. Ideally, you move your truck before then, please. Thank you. Alright, no problem, man. Ideally, you're going to want to use a sledgehammer. As you can see, it's a whole lot quicker. I'm getting about 10 scrap per hit versus, with the hammer, 5. So it's about twice as quick. As you can see, there's a lot of resource containers here because the war is almost over. Another mechanic for scrap fields is the possibility of armats or research materials popping up. Now, every time you break a large or medium pile, there's a chance that a specific Armat will drop. That being aluminum, copper, or iron. Each node has a chance to spawn with any of those, but once it is set on which armat it's going to spawn, it's just only that armat. Excuse me, they're T mats. Armats are refined materials. So, as you can see, I just dropped a big old pile of aluminum. And that's the only T-mat technology material that's going to spawn in this field until it is empty and has respawned, which takes about an hour or two. Then after you fill up your truck or whatever container you have full of this salvage and T-mats, you're going to want to go to your nearest refinery and, well, refine it. Now, I'm here in Terminus, which is a pretty well-traveled area for myself, for logistics. And so it's really nice to know your way around different cities, so there's less possibility of wasting time and traveling with efficiency. See, as in, I almost just turned into that alleyway I wasn't supposed to. So this is the refinery, this building right here. 
So you're going to want to put your salvage into one of three materials. Basic materials or B-mats, diesel, or explosive materials, or E-mats. Now as you can see there's different ratios here for all these different resources that you can choose from. Basic materials are the backbone, absolute backbone of logistics. If you do not know if you need diesel or explosive materials, you can never go wrong creating basic materials. Each of these things have a certain amount of time they require to refine. As you can see, basic materials are not that slow, while explosive materials, refined materials, and heavy explosive materials take a lot longer than these basic materials. Now, this is sulfur. It requires, as you can see, there's no nodes left there, so it's empty. It requires a sledgehammer or a harvester in order to collect from a field. Then, these are components. They also require a sledgehammer or a harvester. Now, you might be wondering, how do you make flatbeds early in the war when you don't have access to sledgehammers? Well, that's where the glorious mines come into play. There's a mine for each resource type. Salvage, sulfur, components, and also there are oil wells for petrol. But you need not worry about that right now for pe the petrol part. So our glorious B mats are almost done refining. And what we do with these is take them to this thing called a factory. In these factories is literally everything that you need on the front line. Guns, ammunition, explosives, shells, gear and equipment, medical supplies, shirts or soldier supplies, or SS. Bunker and garrison supplies, and uniforms. Again, literally everything. Now, as I said, this is late war, so all of these things are teched, except for a few things which are currently being teched now during the second round of the tech tree, which I'll teach in a later video. So, with these basic materials, we can pretty much make anything we want as long as it isn't explosive. So, as you can see, all these artillery shells require HE or E mats. But most everything just takes straight basic materials. Everything. So, if you want to start out, you can make some basic Argenti rifles and crate of ammunition. So as you can see, it is, being, it is in a queue and it will be done soon. Once it is done, you will receive a crate of these rifles and a crate of this ammunition. Those crates, can you have to stockpile them in some sort of base operating post before they can be accessible by infantry on foot. Like, for example, the town hall or town base. And so, whenever you submit, hey guys, this crate, you don't know where any petrol is, right? You will, you know, this will be submitted to the stockpile where you can just pull it, pull as many as you want. Y'all, you all have any petrol? So I will demonstrate a very safe way to deposit uh, crates in a base. So when you're going up to the front line, when you deposit a substantial amount of equipment, a tooltip will come up on the left hand side of your screen uh, that has your name, the name of the person who submitted the equipment, what they submitted, and do you want to commend them for it. So the old way was to be put everything in the inventory 
of that base or operating post and submit it. Which, in that case, someone can just press the submit button as you're putting it in there and everyone will think they did the launching and you did all the hard work. And we don't want that. That would be pretty bad because those commands are pretty juicy. So what you want to do is not do that and do something completely safe and quick and easy where you can secure those precious commands. You'll have your crates in your truck. All you have to do is drive up to the base you want to submit them to and submit them from your truck. Now how do you do this? Just come up here, right click any of these and you'll get a tooltip, submit all to stockpile. And there you go. It's added to the stockpile and you didn't risk anyone submitting it for you. Now, another thing, it's a little bit of an advanced tutorial here, is Basic materials are used for everything. Literally everything. Vehicles, equipment, structures. Every front always needs to have raw basic materials. Diesel is obviously used for vehicles to fuel them, all vehicles. Explosive materials are used for grenades and light shells like mortars. Refined materials, also known as armats, are strictly used for heavy weaponry or vehicles. Heavy explosive materials, also known as HE mats, are used for artillery shells <coughs> and satchel charges, as you can see here. 150s, 120s, Oh, I was wrong. 120s should not take HE mats. Well, that's nice. 300s and 250s all take high explosive materials. Also, the warhead. <laughs> and, of course, the alligator charge, also known as the satchel charge, takes high explosive materials. Which, as you can see, someone nice put a bunch in here for us. And refined materials can be assembled in this vehicle garage for an array of different vehicles. So, everything ranging from LUVs such as the Argonaut and the Icarus, tankettes such as the Ixion and the Acteon, harvesters, flatbeds, half-tracks, APCs, armor-piercing well, AT guns, field machine guns, field guns, <laughs> field artillery, excuse me, and every single tank. They all have a specialized role in different armament, ranging from 7.92 millimeter clips for the Xyphos, all the way up to 120 millimeter shells for the field artillery. Also, refined materials can be used for some specific weaponry, such as heavy machine guns and sniper rifles. As you can see, this 20mm anti-tank, tripod mounted anti-tank rifle requires 5 for a crate. This anti-tank uh, rocket launcher requires 15 for a crate. This one requires 40. This grenade launcher requires 5. This infantry support gun requires 5. Mounted machine gun, etc. I think I made my point clear. So pretty much all resources are required, especially in the early game. In the late game, 
people, <laughs> not gonna lie to you, screw around. So there's not much point. So that is it for this this video. It's just the basics. I'll go over delivery and certain reserving procedures and stockpiles in the next. Appreciate it. Make sure to kill those baby eaters.